Yes, unfortunately, it was expected. They removed from the Russian side, and uh, we expected they will do this at the end of uh, September and the beginning of October. And we we have no doubts that uh, Duma will vote uh, for this um, recognition in in couple of days. But we have to understand that they they it like le legitimating the plan, their plan of um, reacting and answering to any Ukrainian armed forces uh, steps. Uh, or hits or shellings or uh, counter-offensive operations. And uh, for sure, I will say you what they will, what the Russian side will say, We so that they are um, um, in war with NATO as well, because we have NATO weapon, we have support from the West. Actually, all, the, all these ridiculous things, what Putin said yesterday during his uh, um, foolish speech, uh, and um, totally uh, sick speech, I would say. Um, um, and, and, and once again, unfortunately, it was expected step. They, uh, uh, what we really don't understand till the end, what the step will be um, as the answer uh, from the, our allies and partners. Yesterday, you all of us heard uh, Stoltenberg's um, press conference, and unfortunately, we didn't hear any of his response or reaction. So, like he, he couldn't find the words how to how to explain or um, response on our um, um, uh, Zelensky step on uh, NATO um, on NATO what mm. what he had um, what he had like couple couple of hours before uh, general secretary um, has um, has a press conference and I think that's the question the yeah. biggest question. Well, I mean one of the questions is of course is whether NATO will fast track Ukraine's application. Um, I mean, that has never happened before that a, a country has been uh, brought into NATO when it is at war. What do you think Ukraine's chances are of that fast track application into NATO? No, uh, I would argue, uh, uh, first of all, we see fast track for Sweden and Finland. That's a fast track. And uh, no one expects from uh, 1949, when NATO was established, that uh, ever, ever we will see in Europe the conventional war. So I think the time changed, and um, um, what the, the what crucial moment has to come in Europe that NATO will say, okay, we're ready to respond, because that's a threat for for the NATO borders as well. It's not about now only Ukraine. And if Russia used the um, uh, nuclear weapon, how will how will NATO respond that way? So um, and even despite Putin said yesterday that about US and they are, they are using um, a nuclear weapon during the Second World War and that was the very first uh, like the very first um, attempt uh, to use that in in with with the civilians and I think that he's not kidding and he's not it, we have not accept this as a joke so my my my, my argument is um, NATO has to be faster I do understand that they are not so fast as Russia moves. Mm. But uh, so why we, we build so many years the NATO umbrella for all of us and or for our allies or partners when in one crucial day we cannot say faster our response. And I guess that's the, why Zelensky made the, the, the move. Mm. I guess the problem is that if Ukraine does become a member of NATO now, effectively that means that NATO is at war with Russia and that would mean all NATO nations have to act. And then you effectively have a war, which is the West against Russia, which could really raise the stakes even higher and, yes. and make it a lot more dangerous rather than trying to dampen down and, and trying to find a way to not ratchet it up. This, this could escalate it considerably. Yes, but due to Russian views, uh, NATO and Western allies are already in war even before the the February uh, 2022, because they they said already like you have to move out your NATO instructors, you have to move out the weapon from Ukrainian uh, side and so on to make this dem total demilitarization as well and and so on and so on. But but we have to understand yes we are fighting as we can uh, having our resources, but it's not endless. So the question is to Europe. So we will stand behind somewhere until Ukraine will be in the gray zone and buffer zone between between the borders of NATO and Russia. So like, uh, so so what about the international war and the principles? If it doesn't work with us, they will move further. Don't forget about Kaliningrad. They have enough enough um, um, uh, military 
forces and uh, strengths there, by the way. They have Estonia with the border. Um, and I am pretty sure that that's very obvious for Eastern flank countries when they are raising these um, challenges uh, on and put on the table, NATO table, saying, um, come on, we have to rex somehow. And I think, I don't know what has to happen. Um, like all this, all this organization, UN, NATO, OEC, they were established and created to um, 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 to minimize the chances of, of any conventional war. So, what is the final point? And the most crucial point has to be happened when when uh, when they all of them will react mm -hmm. at least somehow without any statements.